In this video, I'm showing you a shadow simulator meant to explore solar and lunar eclipses. Now it's not quite to scale, but it does show some features that some of the other eclipse simulators don't really show clearly. So ideally, this would have been an interactive that you could have come in and moved things around and seen what happens to them. Unfortunately, it uses flash and flash is being phased out. So I decided to go ahead and make a recording. Now in this particular thing, this is showing our sun. This is showing our earth and our moon. Now the moon's a little bit too big compared to earth, but just a little bit but they're definitely too close together. The sun is way too small compared to the size of the earth and it should be much, much further away. Because of that, the size of this lighter gray area of the shadows is a little bit too big compared to what it would be for the real earth and moon. But we can still learn some good things here. So one of the things you can take a look at is the shape of the shadows in general. And the main shadow is the darker gray part with the outer shadow being where you're partly in the shadow. The other thing that we can look at is the effect of moving the object further away from the sun or closer to the sun. And again, we'd never be this close to the sun we would be much further away from the sun. How does that affect the size and shape of the shadow as we move closer or further away from the sun? The next thing that we want to look at, and I'm going to refer back to some of the other simulations we've already had, understanding that the moon is going to move around the earth. So the question becomes is where around this cycle would the shadow of the moon fall on the earth? And where around this path would the shadow of the earth fall on the moon? And again, using some of our previous notations, this was position one, position two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then going back to one. And I haven't managed to move it exactly in a circular orbit around there, but you could kind of imagine what would happen under various circumstances as I move the moon around the earth. And again, this is not to the proper scale. Use these simulations to try to be able to answer the questions in your lab manual. 